At Listen Up, we care about what you think. Drop by our website and answer this week's question. How has technology affected your family? We're at listenuptv.com. Um, it has made music more accessible to me. That's my big thing. Like, I take music everywhere with me, and I remember, like, back before MP3 players and everything, you know, you had to have your little tape deck, and it just wasn't... It wasn't as easy. Now you can have any song you want to download in a second and you can listen to it. A any other ways that technology has uh, improved your life? Um, I guess I mean cell phones, like everything makes it more accessible, but I don't know if it's all an improvement. It's kind of annoying sometimes too. Our next guest once worked devising advertising strategies for the German auto manufacturer Porsche. Today he's a Mennonite pastor and author of Flickering Pixels, How Technology Shapes Your Faith. Shane Hips joins us from Phoenix, Arizona. And Shane, let's start with why did you switch careers from fast cars to faith? <laughs> uh, well, the, there's a long answer for that. The short answer is largely just a sense of purpose. Uh, my purpose in the world and what I was doing wasn't uh, connecting with what I was doing in that previous uh, profession. Um, and the reason mostly was that uh, most of my time and energy was spent uh, attempting to convince people that a certain product or service would meet their deepest needs in this life. And uh, my understanding of my spiritual life was that that kind of peace didn't come from buying a product or a service. It came, in fact, from something within, uh, an experience of God or the divine within. So that was, uh, I decided to devote my life to that instead of the other. All right, and along the way, you studied technology. You studied uh, what values are being added to our lives with our communication technology. But you also came up with some theories that we might be losing some things in this development to being a very wired world. What did you learn? Well, uh, in, a, in a general sense, uh, what I learned was that a thinker who has long uh, been out of the spotlight, uh, but years ago was very important, a man by the name of Marsha McLuhan, coined a phrase uh, that goes like this, the medium is the message. And what I discovered is that that little statement or phrase unlocked my capacity to understand and interpret some of the things that were happening culturally. And uh, in, the, in the simplest sense, what that helps us understand is that how you communicate something matters as much as what you're communicating. And, uh, and every single new medium or technology we use to communicate will actually create something new, but also take something away. And uh, so th that's sort of the pattern that we have to be aware of, is that every new technology both does and undoes something. Okay. And you also write in Flickering Pixels about the Marshall McLuhan theory. You, you boil it down to your, you, be, your, you become what you behold. And right. what are we becoming as we behold everything through computer screens? Well, we're becoming increasingly complicated, for one. Uh, what we behold is immensely complex. What we behold is immensely uh, fragmented and in some ways even schizophrenic. And so the mind uh, begins to mirror some of what we are beholding. We become what we behold simply means that our thinking patterns and habits begin to mirror the things we use to think with. Uh, so the internet, television, image-based culture, all of those different things. But if you were to boil it down into one simple way to describe what seems to be happening culturally and to our, our beings and our brains, is that we are in the last maybe 100 years uh, increasingly becoming a more right-brained culture rather than a left-brain culture. Okay, the left brain is that logical thinking left brain. The the, the part of the brain that reads and breaks down ideas, the right brain, the intuition, the experience. So how is that affecting our learning? Well, one of the biggest things that it's doing is it's making reading much more difficult to do. Reading and writing are dominantly left hemisphere tasks in the brain. And uh, the right hemisphere of the brain plays much less of a role in reading and writing. So when you're dealing with things like education, what you're faced with is that the capacities that our culture and particularly young people have are fundamentally different than they used to be two generations ago. And so um, <clears throat> because of an image-based culture, we are losing our capacity for abstract thinking, linear reasoned thinking, um, and we are increasingly preferring more intuitive experiential kinds of things which the right brain is uh, especially suited for. Now, kids will still read. Humans are very resilient people. But all we're doing is stacking the deck a little bit against them. It's a little bit like saying, uh, I want you to be a bodybuilder, but I want you to only ingest ice cream. 
Uh, and again, that's not a statement about the content, that's about the medium. The way that the content comes to you changes the way the brain processes the information and creates new habits of the brain that are not necessarily serving things like reading and writing. Okay, so now these, let's go back to the idea of us changing the pathways of our brain to be more pixel oriented. How does that affect my ability to learn about God? Well, uh, <clears throat> candidly, in some ways, it may help you learn about God, uh, oddly enough. And the reason is because um, most of the people who have come to some kind of a spiritual awakening or a spiritual awareness uh, have come by way of a direct experience something significant shifted in them and caused an experience of God. And uh, oddly enough, the right hemisphere of the brain, which is being exercised increasingly in this culture, is very well suited to those kinds of experiences. Uh, the left hemisphere of the brain is much more about logic and reason and doctrine and abstraction. And so increasingly in our culture, we pe see people who are far less interested in religion in a classic sense, far more interested in spirituality in a new sense. And a lot of that is a shift from left hemisphere to right hemisphere because much of religion is framed in very left hemisphere, belief-based, doctrine ways. And for most of our culture who are growing up consuming an image-based world, that way of constructing an orientation to the divine no longer has resonance. Okay, and so let's say you are interested in learning about God, but you've got to take the time then to, to engage it. What advantage or disadvantage do we have because we are such a technology-driven group? Well, uh, I would say the one loss associated with not having quite the same capacities we used to have 30, 50 years ago intellectually is that um, it, it makes it difficult to make distinct distinctions between, or a word we use a lot is to discern between uh, something that is good and something that is bad. And as a consequence, the kind of spirituality that is emerging, though it is widely open to all kinds of experiences, it in fact has a very difficult time distinguishing between that which is most useful to your spiritual life and that which may be in fact undermining it. Shane Hips, author of Flickering Pixels, thank you for joining us from Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you. Glad to be with you. There's more to come when Listen Up returns. I'll tell you eight short words to transform your conundrum with technology. That's next. <music>